We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? And welcome back to a really radio 162. This is the C side of the of the recording. Uh, Friday, August 18th. Is it still Friday? Yes. Still Friday, August 18th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go overly. I'm your host, Andy Cowan, still with my usual suspects, Stephen Griffith and Daniel Atherton. Welcome back, gentlemen. And of course, we're going to make mistakes, so let us know about them. O'Reilly Radio Podcast at gmail.com or phone them in at 470 222 6759. And as always, thank you to our Patreon supporters, Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, and Daniel Duncan of the Problem Addict Podcast. All right, so <clears throat> with that out of the way, um, earlier this month, um, I saw something disturbing. Very disturbing. Yeah. And I, I think. Before we get into it, I haven't played the bumper in a while, so I'm going to do that. If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. If you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. It's not just a lot of mysterious things happening. There's a lot we understand out there, and that understanding empowers you. If you base medicine on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. If you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. And it works in good ways and bad ways. And this would be... Bad idea. Or, uh, <laughs> it's called the gun Don't glove. <laughs> it's called the gun glove. And basically, it attaches a high-speed motor and a cam to... What would be your trigger finger on a glove? And with this handy little jury rigged device, uh, you can fire a semi automatic weapon really freaking fast. A lot faster than you could just with pulling your finger. It's like the old fashioned fanning the hammer technique, but yeah. this mm-hmm. time using an auto loader, which means you can get even more speed out of the gun. It's sickening. There, there is a link on the show notes. Takes you out to Gizmodo. There's video of this thing. They're they're trying to make this thing a reality, and that means that any semi-automatic weapon that you get suddenly became a whole hell of a lot more dangerous. I'm just waiting, waiting for this to get into market and then someone can ma- a mass shooting with it. Well, the advantage we have so far looking at the designs and I, I've seen this thing is, for right now at least, as neat as it is, as I do like guns, I'll admit that, it's unwieldy for any kind of, I think, accurate fire or any kind of real, I'm just beyond, I'm just showing off kind of fire. If they can make the thing smaller... Okay, now it starts becoming an actual real danger. Like, okay, now I'm starting to get twingy, but it's not exactly the most stealthily or unnoticed thing in the world. <laughs> no, but neither is yeah. an M16. <laughs> and I mean, I you've seen some of these mass shooters going in full tactical armor. Mm-hmm. Something bulky and clunky ain't going to stop them if nope. it means that they can get more bullets out. Hmm. So the auto glove is supposed to go into production in September. Uh, it bills itself as a mechanism that allows for full auto fire without ATF approval, a tax stamp, or firearm modification. This is this is what gamers do when they cheat. Mm-hmm. I'm just hoping that the government gets smart enough and comes down with legislation blocking this thing or heavily regulating it at the very least. Now, people that are watching the video are probably wondering, Oh, come on. That's, that's not going to be able to do, do that much faster than my finger. Oh, 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 contraire, mon frere. Because no, this is designed to give a semi-automatic firearm, a rate of up to one thousand rounds per minute a thousand yeah, rounds per minute that's how and you quickly have extended it can cycle magazines and we haven't mm-hmm. regulated against extended mags yeah, if you see the full video you'll see <laughs> live fire just how fast this thing fires and they go through 
besides the Air 15, they also show like Glock pistols and such on and so forth. It's like, okay, yeah, and this is, I'm dumping the whole clip. And Glocks, again, can come with an extended magazine. And you are just spraying so much firepower out there. And I, again, these spree shooters aren't necessarily known for their trigger discipline or being no, able to switch out a clip quickly. But a lot of these shooters are found with multiple magazines. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this allows them to the spray shooter, out. The one. pulse shooter had how many magazines on him? He had a I ridiculous number of magazines. It, 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 but this just makes a spree shooter far more dangerous. This needs to be stopped. Now, the, the video that I'm showing right now, they had people holding a pistol. A pistol has a wicked kickback, so all you're doing is spraying the ceiling. Pump, 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 yeah. pump, as it rides back. So there are people that are going to think it's going to make them Superman. And it's going to make them a lot more dangerous. Yeah. So you're going to get caught in the crossfire, potentially. Oh, well, look at look at that enormous magazine on that. Drum mag, yeah. Yeah, it's a full drum. Oh, no, it's a dual drum. They're on both sides. Oh, All right, yeah, it is. Now, also, that is a modified rifle. She's not wearing the glove. Yeah, I know. That is a full, full automatic weapon. But, yeah, that's got a dual drum mag on it. That's it's called a uh, bump fire stock. Yeah. <sighs> it's, yeah, it's all sorts of bad. Oh, what the? Th- <laughs> he's, got, he's got a crank. Oh my god! That's like that World is War One. Accurate even in the slightest. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. With that going, you might be more accurate with a musket. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, jeez. So. <sighs> so there's that. Yeah, uh, that exists. That exists in the world now, uh, and it's not going to go away because it's too easy to do. You know that Chinese manufacturers are going to you know, just start pumping them out, and they're going to be. They're just going to be something that you can buy on Alibaba. You know, it's it's if, not going to be if anything. Regulations, if regulations do not come down, yeah. It's a motor with a cam on attached to a glove. How are you going to regulate that? Yeah. There's nothing to regulate. It's a simple thing. And you could buy this part and then buy this part <laughs> and then separately and home. then assemble it at home. That is going to be out there. There is no way around that. This is one of those impossibilities to actually regulate. The genie's out of the bottle. Yeah. It's like, oh, wow, I can do that? Look at them. They actually made it work. Oh, well, I can see very clearly in the video that they've published, uh, you know, as exactly what they're doing. I can just 3D print some parts and just kind of put it in and done. In fact, I could just 3D print the parts and I don't have to put it on my glove. I could just put it on the gun. And then I can just press the button on the side, not the trigger. Yeah, it gets worse. It doesn't get better. So, there's that. Genie is out of the bottle on that one. Horses have left the barn. So, uh, it's just a matter of time before we start seeing some very interesting things uh, come in what our, one of my friends calls the NRA lottery, where all the winners die. Um, so, speaking of death, uh, the Antarctica... The Antarctica. Why did I say <laughs> the, the Antarctica? Antarctica? It's Antarctica. Um, <laughs> it's that continent on the bottom of the planet. Um, now, there were, uh, we already know through science and geology and, and looking at things that there are volcanoes underneath Antarctica. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, as the ice has continued to melt and more more lenses are brought to bear on the subject. We're learning more about Antarctica, and well, (laughs) almost a hundred unknown volcanoes have been found hidden (laughs) under the surface. (laughs) So, there are now uh, 91, so nearly a hundred, they rounded up quite a bit, Uh, 91 uh, had never been detected, bringing the total number of volcanoes on Antarctica to a staggering 138. 
on one continent. This is bad. Now, oh, but wait, there's more, and it gets worse. <laughs> um, because as as we've spoken before on climate change and how these things operate, as as the cascade happens and more and more things melt, what you end up with is other consequences of that ice not being there. Ice, as it turns out when it's several miles thick, is awfully heavy. Yeah. And what happens when you remove pressure from a pot of boiling things? Aha! Like a volcano? Like a volcano. Like a volcano. Yeah, so as the ice continues to melt and the ground is able to swell because the pressure, the pressure can be released suddenly. That's a lot more carbon in the atmosphere. That's an awful lot of volcanoes in one place. But let's also be honest, you know, this is probably good for us because, I'm sorry, if Florida keeps heating up the way it's going to go, we're going to have to move down there anyways. <laughs> oh, okay, so what you're hoping for is that enough volcanoes erupt to create a blanket, a nuclear winter effect no, no, <laughs> and to cool down the planet. Only. No, 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 to break the whole ice sheet, go off, wonderful, like, oh, the ice sheet's going to go. there again, we just all of us move, all of us down to Antarctica. <laughs> That's that's a, a strange idea Call you have there. Antarctica. We're gonna have the polar shift going on, and we're but, all good. Yeah, but you know, there's there's the problems of how long nighttime is, or how long daytime is on the polar regions. That's why we just have. There's no problem with that. We just live like hobbits, burrow into the ground. But there's magma there. <laughs> there's mountains there too that are non magmatic. Well, yeah, everything on the east side apparently is okay. But as we as we look, let me see. I can pull up uh, the east center monitor. Side is better than the west side. That's right. There it is. Okay. So all the all the little pink dots for those of you watching at home, all of the little pink dots are volcanoes. <laughs> That's a lot of volcanoes. <laughs> uh, that is a lot of volcanoes. But it's all on the west side of Antarctica, which is interesting. So I guess that's fault line, probably. That's where the plates join. So, not much thing we can do about that, but, yeah. So, it's an interesting article, um, and scientists do have the same theory that I was suggesting earlier, that uh, the theory suggests that this is occurring because without ice sheets on top of them, there is a release of pressure on the regions, and volcanoes then become more active because it happened in Iceland, it happened in Greenland, it happened in yeah. Alaska. All of those areas that no longer have giant ice sheets on top of them, oh, look, there happened to be volcanoes there, and they all ended up being active after that. Well, hopefully enough of them will erupt and cause an AA nuclear winter-like scenario so we can cool the hell down. That would be, it'd be a geoengineering proje- project. You know, what we should do, wait, why did I say should? No, what we could do, <laughs> in the, if the world of unintended consequences didn't exist, we could go down there and we could facilitate blowing some of those volcanoes and putting enough ash into the atmosphere to cool down the planet. Quoting from the uh, <laughs> article, I yeah, think it is very Isaac. likely. I think it's very likely that this region will turn out to be the densest region of volcanoes in the world, greater even than East Africa, where mounts, I can't pronounce that, Kilimanjaro, Longinot, and all the other active volcanoes are concentrated. And also saying the identified volcanoes extend in height from 100 meters, so 328 feet, to 3,850 meters, or just under 13,000 feet. That's a big... That's a big damn volcano. That's a big... Boom. Yeah, and and given that there's like 4,000 kilometers of ice on some of the some of the regions of Antarctica, thick... Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to walk 4,000 kilometers. <laughs> Much less, you know, have to drill through all of that just to get to, like, something other than ice. So, it's... It's a staggering place. I mean, that, yeah. I give people ideas because of volcanoes. Uh, again, Kilimanjaro is big. Kilimanjaro is 19,000 feet tall. 
Uh, but one, a lot of us, at least in the United States, have been familiar with, especially seeing having seen the old footage of the thing, you know, annihilating itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mount St. Helens, yeah, yeah, is eight thousand three hundred and sixty-six feet tall. So this oh. one's five thousand feet taller. So Mount Doom. Who knew that Mount Doom was uh, was just south, all the way south? <laughs> just keep going south. The elves. Go south until you start going north again, and then you've turned, gone too far. <laughs> Hi. You have, you have reached Middle Earth. It was covered in ice. Uh, apparently, the west side is Mordor. Oh, wow. That'd be... We gotta go forge that damn ring, wow, man. Wow. That would be an interesting story. I got a jewelry fetish going on. Let's go. We're <laughs> apparently in the sixth age, and it's about to end. <laughs> oh, well, how about that? Well, it is the sixth major extinction event, right? So, yeah. Uh, I didn't really intend yeah. that. That was entirely accidental. Oh, that was just, just accidental? Oh, well, you're, you're spot on. <laughs> the, t- the time of man is oh. at end. The time of the cephalopod has come. Uh, but they're so squishy. <laughs> yeah, but they're almost all brain. <laughs> they're too damn smart. Well, they're... they're mm. Yeah, yeah. Once they it, harness their psychic powers and can learn to float and not care. Do you and know travel dimensions? Do you know why dolphins uh, play with their food, especially when it's octopus and cephalopod? No, because their brains are distributed throughout their entire body. So even if they if they don't make sure it's dead, the tentacles themselves will try to crawl out of them. Oh. Even when the even when they're no longer attached to the rest of the body. So you have to tenderize it. Yes, that's why they beat it to death. That's why they just rip them and throw them and things like that. Yeah, because they have to be dead for sure dead. Otherwise, they will try to kill them as they eat them. Even if the main body is dead, the tentacles themselves have enough neurons in them to try and escape. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that I need to play a zombie illithid. No. Got it. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no intellect of ours. Nope, nope, nope. Not, not, nothing of that. Soup. Nope. No. Um. <laughs> and this geeky moment brought to you by Sphere. <laughs> You'll be hearing more about that later. You probably will. I guarantee will. it. Yeah, you probably will. Yeah. And that, that so will be. Uh, some good news. Yeah, that, that'll be part of, uh, part of a sister podcast uh, called Roll Initiative that I'm, <laughs> that I'm working on. <laughs> Because that's the first thing you ever want to hear when you hit the table with your GM is roll initiative. Oh, crap. What did I do? <laughs> what did you do wrong? <laughs> um, so okay. you walk in like five minutes late to game, you go, five minutes? Really, guys? Yep. What did you do? It's like, well, had you been here on time, we wouldn't have wiped. <laughs> five minutes, guys. Five minutes. <laughs> I was gone for five more minutes. Yeah, well, remember... <laughs> A round is six seconds. <laughs> so, so, rule number one, don't split the party. Never. This includes in real life. Yeah, don't split the party. Yeah, don't, don't listen to those horror movies. We need to split up. No, you do not. No, you do not. <laughs> you need to stick the fuck together. <laughs> the two things you, ne- the two major <sighs> things you never did in horror movies, never split the party, Yep. never look up. No, you should look if up. Look up, they get, they get you. No, if you look up, that's when it kills you. Well, no, you, everyone should look up at the same time. Uh, but constantly look up, never look around. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're, you're just dead anyway. Don't say I'll be back. I'll be right uh, back. What was that noise? Let me go check. No, 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 no. no. Let us go check. Yeah, let's all go check. <laughs> or just you know, five minutes in the movie, just burn everything down. Like not just the ha- the house, everything for a ten square mile radius. And just always all keep it. your clothes on. Always. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> so I have some great news. Yes. Some really fantastic news, especially for you audiophiles out there. 25,000 songs recorded onto 78 RPM discs in the early 20th century have been released online for free. So this, uh, this story came out um, a little while ago, and it's like, Wait, that I must download all of these now. So uh, the Philly company, uh, they digitize records. That's one of the things they do. And they, uh, uh, let's see, 
25,000 songs recorded on 78 discs. Uh, they are the first batch of an estimated 400,000 piece virtual record collection to be made available by the Internet Archive. From gospel, by the Tuskegee uh, Institute, uh, to opera recorded in Italy, to novelty tunes by Spike Jones, to, uh, to hot, hot though obscure jazz. So, just everything. Wonderful things. Wonderful things are coming. Um, 78 is an old format. Um, I believe that modern record players do have the setting. So you've got 40, 45s, which are the, mm-hmm. little, the little ones with the big, big circle spindle in the middle. Then you've got the 33s, which are your, your typical album, your LP, long play record. And then still in that size format, sometimes a little bit smaller, were the 78s. And they were going awfully fast because that was just how, how they were recorded at the time. And they, I, I have a couple of them. Maybe I should send them there so they can get, get them on into the archive. Get digitized, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I have actually on the shelf back there. Let me move my finger. Tick, 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 tick. There. Yeah, right there. That is a record player. And it's a USB nice. record player. So I can oh, sweet. plug it in and, and suck off things from vinyl. So I don't know if that's what they did, but that's probably what they did. <laughs> <laughs> let's also say let's let's let it be known how awesome the guy's name is who's doing this. His name is George Blood. Yes. The real thing that's different about this project uh, is managing groove size, said George Blood, who has digitized records for the Library of Congress and the Philadelphia Orchestra. There's no standard for the size of the groove. Interesting. I did not. I was completely unaware of that. So he solved the problem by developing a turntable with four tone arms, each holding a different make stylus. On one pass the record of the record, he can record each stylus uh, discreetly onto its own digital track. Audio files are then able to listen to up to 16 tracks of the same piece of music to appreciate the subtleties of surface noise and equalization. Wow. Oh, wow. That this project just got a hell of a lot more interesting. I did not know that. A lot I just more technical. I was just like, "Oh, that's cool!" And then it's like, and "Whoa, again, deeper." One, well, one of the things is in vinyl, you you have tonalities that you can't record digitally normally. Yeah, that that, that warmth, that kind of thing, and it's kind of different every time you play it too. So mm-hmm. I've I've got a bigger a record cabinet, but it's uh. It's probably it's not nearly this big, so. No, one of the nice, uh, one of the interesting things to to come out in this discussion of vinyl is that it has made a definitive comeback. Not here in the states, though. Uh, throughout uh, the Caribbean, you have a a, a revival of vinyl mm-hmm. because you have a lot of artists, few consumers. So oh, that's they record stuff. They record stuff on vinyl because you can recycle it. So all the unused discs get recycled. Hmm. I know that there are several pressing facilities now in the United States, and more coming up uh, all the time. So mm-hmm. it, it is making a, a comeback here in the states as well. Well, it's a. It, it's a solid format, and now that because of things like iTunes and because of iHeartRadio app and, and, and other forms where you can get music and, and Pandora, you have more and more access to customizing and hearing precisely what it is that you want. Mm-hmm. The actual purchase of, of a solid format is, is a luxury good. Yeah. So you can go to something a little more esoteric and the people who are making these can save money by going to an older format. It doesn't really save money, though. 
No, the pr- because vinyl is relatively cheap, and the pressing technology, while old, it, there's still enough machines out there that they can just grab them up for relatively cheap, refurbish them, and use them. Mm. The whole project is intended to be a community effort, said Blood. Brewster is putting forth the funds through Internet Archive to create this reference collection to have critical mass, to have enough that everyone wants to join in. So far, there are 75,000 sides that have been contributed outside of what we have done. Wow. So they're trying to get a, a almost definitive music archive of everything that has been put to vinyl. Pretty much. I okay, applaud this. Was, I'm going through actually looking at some of the stuff. There's a lot of mm-hmm. stuff I've seen that are the old classics, like I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas, House of the Rising I love that Sun, one. Um, All I Want for Christmas, The Two Front Teeth. I'm seeing like a lot of like, you know, a lot of all kinds of like really neat Georgia Cakewalk, Take Me Out of the Ball Game. Yeah. I just came across one. Basic Yiddish lesson one. Oh, <gasps> right. cool! Huh? <laughs> That's great. That was unexpected. That is great. I'm just and everyone at... I've seen so far has nine total tracks you can listen to, and all tells you, uh, like it's like three point eight CT EQ, uh, three point eight CT flat. They all have EQ and flat for all of them. But it's all different. I'm assuming those are all different uh, sizes of needle. Again, this is going beyond. Mm-hmm. For anyone yeah. out there, this is going beyond my understanding, way beyond. So feel free to write and correct me. So and they're educate me. They're tweeting out uh, as some new things come in that they're featuring. Uh, so and they're they're tweeting at uh, at great seventy eight the number seventy eight project, great seventy eight project. Uh, so you can. I'm definitely going to follow them on Twitter. Uh, so one that they tweeted out here is, uh, let's see, Hot Lips performer uh, Busey Lang Davis, Henry Busey, and his orchestra. Let me play this. See if it comes up. You got that Fallout feel to it. I love it. Well, yeah. Ah. Old time and oh, this is wonderful. Andy is happy for the weekend. I am. This is this is fantastic. Oh, I I I am going to be lost in tracking stuff down in here. <laughs> I just random just going down pages. Songs for victory, music for political action. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I'm probably going to have a lot of these in my game. Just like, okay, play this track and read this. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. So, yeah, that, uh, this is definitely something that I think everybody should go take a look at and take a listen to. It's just I get history. You- yeah, no, this is history. This is Columbia Records, MGM, Victor, uh, Derby, which I hadn't even heard of. Uh, American Records, I'm seeing here. Um, no, tons of of old stuff. Decca, uh, RCA, Victor. Mm-hmm. No, there, there's just tons of stuff here. Actually, there's even Japanese. I'm not surprised. You can have everything in here. Other projects with an online listening component include the National Jukebox by the Library of Congress and many uploads, of course, on YouTube because they're all there. So. Oh. I love jazz. <laughs> oh, I guess this would almost be big band, but it's it's not. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> and on that note, ta da! And it's done. So, with that, definitely uh, go take a look at the Great Seventy Eight. Uh, the links are in the show notes where you can find find that. Um, it's it's just fantastic. And really, I think that that's uh, I have never had a better place to end a show. Never. I think we're good. So we'll just do that. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful day. What a wonderful day. At least at, at least at the very end here. So <clears throat> if you've enjoyed what we've done here and you'd like to help us out and you're not already donating to the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, the ACLU, or uh, perhaps the Internet Archive Project or the Great 78, uh, you can donate to the show through patreon.com slash Radio and uh, maybe get some perks here and there when I possibly can because of life. Uh, make the algorithms work for us by reviewing us on the iTunes or wherever you happen to find us to boost our ranking and get us in front of more people. And speaking of getting us in front of more people, how about you use your words and tell somebody about us? And, of course, engage with us directly. Send us a message on the social medias or the electronic mails at Podcast at gmail.com or if you're the more talkative sort, 470-222-6759. Always ready to take your call or your text. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. They're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention, and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been a really radio, part of the Random Max Company. This work license under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pemgea, created by Kevin McLeod of CompTech.com. And also thanks to the Great 78 for uh, for the use of that particular song that I just played, which was Hot Lips. So enjoy that as well. All right, thanks everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. And I'll try really hard to get all the shows out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Resist. <laughs>